welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial with the channel of the world of building design. So in this tutorial, we are going to continue on the uh, Teiko hydronic system solution software. Uh, if you remember in the previous tutorial, we started introducing this software and how important and uh, how beneficial is the use of this software uh, as it's um, helping you to build your schematic design uh, for a hydronic system for your project. In this tutorial, I'm going to go into another example, a kind of similar example, but we're going to uh, dive into more features of this software and how we can utilize some of the parameters and, and features of this software, helping us understand the fundamentals we have learned so far. And in this tutorial, as I said, we're going to create a hydronic schematic design we assume that this is a two-story building and we have uh, four fan coil units in each floor so uh, we have a total of eight fan coil units some of the assumption for this uh, schematic design would be that um, we are going to assume that all the fan coil units have the same cooling capacity of five ton cooling and the heating capacity of 43,200 BTU per hour. So basically we have a fan coil unit which provides the heating and cooling uh, for our uh, building or for our spaces. The piping arrangement we are going to select here is a reverse return piping type. Choice of equipment for creating the heating for the entire hydronic loop would be one boiler. For the cooling we are going to use a water cooled heat recovery chiller and also one cooling tower tied into our chilled, uh, chilled water system or to our chillers. The focus of this tutorial would be we're going to look at the hydronic flow in each of the branches as it's connected to, uh, to each of the Fankel units or as it's connected to our um, chillers or um, boilers etc. So we're going to have a, a more uh, detailed view on that and also we're going to look at uh, the software and how it automatically shows you the pipe sizing so and what's the software rationale behind sizing the pipes when you build your schematic design and then we're going to re review the head loss calculation rationale very briefly we're not going to get into more detail i'm just trying to build some more introductory training on this area and then we're going to review the head loss calculation as i said and also look at the pipe length and how we can add the pipe length into our schematic because uh, we have to introduce the pipe length to our schematic to show what's the eventually uh, the head loss or pressure drop across that pipe we're going to look at the uh, uh, scenario tab on the bottom of the software and see how that facilitates uh, visuality of the software and let you quickly um, scroll between the heating, cooling mode, etc. And also we're going to look at the uh, multiple parameters that you can demonstrate on your completed schematic design because this is very helpful for you to understand at a glance what is your velocity what is your uh, flow, what is the diameter of the pipe and many of these parameters you can just demonstrate it right away on your schematic design. So let's go ahead and start uh, building our schematic based on the criteria defined on the first section of this example and then we're going to go into the, the focus of the tutorial and review all of those. I'm going to get into the software of uh, Teiko Hydronic Solution. So. If you remember, this is a software I have used in the previous tutorial. I'm going to continue on that. Uh, so I'm going to create a new a project. So on the left hand side top, you see a new. I'm going to just open that and create a new project. I'm not going to name the location or anything for this. This is just an example. The first thing I want to do, because as I said in the previous tutorial, I have only access to the um, hydronic um, a schematic design free trial of this software uh, even though this software has a tremendous power uh, for you to be able to design a, a wide range of system whether it's hydronic or air distribution a steam system and and so on and so forth so you can you can build a tons of different type of schematic through this software but you need to get the license and and take advantage of other features of this software. But 
if you go to the to the website Takeo website, you can download this software for free for the trial version, and uh, only the hydronic uh, version is open for you to use. And if you're interested, you're a professional designer, or you would like to uh, use uh, the software for further design, you can you can buy the license. I personally found it very useful because it's a combination of the actual scientific information or the basis of mechanical engineering fundamentals merged with the development of the uh, manufacturers and how you have to get this information from the manufacturer. So it's, it's kind of combined and it's a very useful tool uh, to facilitate the work. So now I'm going to get into insert tab on the top and then I'm going to go to Vizart. I'm going to just go into hydronic system. I'm going to go to next here and then I'm going to select the reverse return. As you can see, I'm going to have a heating and cooling to be combined one changeover system. So it's a kind of two pipe fan coil unit. You have either heating or cooling. So I'm going to keep that as it is. As I said, I have a two story building. I want two loops running across my corridor or something like that. And uh, so you see our loop, our horizontal loops, meaning that two pipes for the supply and return of hydronic system runs across your uh, zone area. And then uh, it's going right toward right. And then the built direction is down. It means that you have two pipe drop from your loop down connected to your fan coil unit. You can have it upward, it's up to you, but uh, realistically, when you run the hydronic piping across the uh, hallway or something, you need to get a branch uh, pipe from it and drop it down to your, uh, if you have a vertical fan coil unit sitting on the floor, that's, that's the way to go for the built direction. Uh, mechanical room, I assume it's on the top left, so I assume that I have a penthouse on the top and uh, that's where we have the mechanical room there. So I'm going to keep it as top left. I go next. The number of load, as I said, I have four loads or four fan coil units per floor, so I'm going to keep it as four. So this is per loop. Remember that I have one to two loop here, so it's basically I have two loop. Next, uh, Load orientation, the load is below, so it's below the actual loop. I have my load. I'm going to go next. Fan coil unit is a type of terminal unit I use. The type, I use the stack, vertical stack. There are other options. I'm just keeping this as an example. Go next. I have a two-way valve uh, for control. I don't have a three-way. I want to keep it as two-way. And uh, location, I keep it as coil outlet. At the uh, downstream of the coil, I would have my you know, control valve. A load of fan coil unit for the heating. As I said, I want to keep 43,200 BTU per hour. And for the cooling load, I want to keep it as 0.8 as sensible heat ratio. So 20% would be our latent heat and 80% uh, would be our um, uh, sensible heat that is offset by this fan coil unit from that specific space. Then, uh, as I said, my five ton Cooling capacity of each fan coil unit corresponds to 60,000 BTU per hour, which I'm keeping as is. For airflow, I just keep as an example as 2,000 CFM. Um, and the way I come to this number is 5 ton cooling. Each ton cooling, I, I consider approximately 400 CFM required to create that 1 ton cooling. So um, uh, 400 multiplied by 5 for 5 ton you get into 2000 uh, CFM. This is all approximation at this point. I just want to let you know that this is not a final design. You can use a final this as a final design. You have to fine tune this depending on your building, depending on your load, um, orientation of your building, a specific load in each uh, rooms, etc. and then fine tune this. Uh, system. I'm not going to change anything for the dry bulb uh, and wet bulb air during the heating and cooling i keep it as it is, and then i go to next heating source i use boiler cooling source as i said i want to use a heat recovery water cooled chiller and cooling tower so i'm going to keep it as this option here i'm going to go next uh, boiler one boiler fluid type water i'm not changing that uh, living water temperature is 180 i generate 180 even though it says condensing force Condensing type boiler and this 180 is not what you want for condensing temperature, but I just keep it as uh, as default for now 
so in reality, this is going to be a non-condensing boiler, but I don't want to change that anymore. Uh, for heat recovery chiller, obviously I want only one chiller. It's not very cost effective to, to have two large chillers. Uh, I'm just going to keep it as one. Uh, evaporator is obviously water. Temperature differential is 10 degree for outside. Cooling tower between 85 to 95 uh, degree Fahrenheit you consider. Cooling tower, one cooling tower, type of fluid water. Living temperature, I change it as 85 here. You deliver 95 degree Fahrenheit to your cooling tower, you get back 85 degree. For the type of uh, piping connection, piping arrangement, I selected primary secondary for either heating and cooling. And also for the chiller condenser, I'm gonna use primary as my type of piping connection. I go next. For the pumps, I want to have two secondary pumps. Same thing for the heating and cooling. Uh, I'm not changing anything here. Uh, expansion tank, only one unit. Type of air separator is okay. I'm just going to go finish. Once I've created my system here, I'm just going to drop it here. Just left click and drop it here. So that's basically the system I created. I have two loop. You see one loop on the top, one loop at the bottom. And then I have four fan coil unit in each loop. So let's have a quick look at one of the fan coil units. As you can see, the blue lines are representative of uh, cooling capacity or um, yeah, in fact, cooling the 14 0.9 GPM is actually fluid uh, circulation requirement to achieve that cooling and the red numbers as you can see these red numbers are representative of heating. You have all these parameters is defined here as your supply chill water temperature, return chill water temperature, supply hot water, uh, supply uh, and return hot water and also the um, fluid, fluid flow for uh, heating mode and cooling mode and also the coil capacity of this fan coil for heating and cooling. So that applies to everything here. Let's have a quick look at what we have generated. We created one uh, boiler here. We have uh, the boiler circulators as we defined earlier. So this boiler. Uh, for now, this numbers that you can see as 20.9 feet of head. This is not a realistic number. This has to be all corrected because we haven't introduced any pipe length at all so far. Although uh, you might see these numbers, but before you uh, fine tuning this whole system, you can get a realistic uh, result from this uh, schematic. On the cooling side of things, you have uh, one heat recovery chiller. So let's have a look at the capacity based on our fan cold units. We need a 40 ton um, heat recovery chiller here. On the um, evaporator side of the chiller uh, you have a 40 to 50 degree return and on the condenser side of the chiller you have uh, 85 to 95 and then you have your cooling tower obviously you have the gpm of the cooling tower and also the cooling capacity so this is a reverse return piping system as you remember so looking at the secondary piping so not to forget that our boilers here is a primary loop our chiller is a primary loop. These two pumps are all in the secondary loop. So you have the air separator and the expansion tank right before the distribution uh, pumps or secondary pumps, uh, which distributes the hot water or chilled water down into, into the coils. And then it's collected here. You collect the um, return water, whether it's hot or chilled water, and bring it back to here and recirculate. In, in reality, you get you get the return water in a cooling mode back into the chiller and then you supply it back to the line and then now you have a, a cold chill water at 42 degree Fahrenheit now going back into my secondary pump. In a heating mode the same thing applies. When you have a heating mode hot water return comes back here and first gets into your boiler and hits, hits it up to 180 degree go back to this point and then now distributes to your pumps back into your building and your fan coil units. Pretty simple um, schematic. It looks very simple because we created it in a matter of a uh, few clicks. But uh, in reality, you have to build all of this, um, you know, individually by scratch on your CAD drawings or, um, you know, uh, you have to do this all manual. One thing I wanted to show you is that on the bottom, you have some tabs where you can scroll between different modes of operation. For example, what we see here is a combination of heating and cooling mode. 
but if I come and click on the say summer cooling on the bottom here, what happens is it's going to give you the um, uh, only cooling mode of operation. So you can see all the numbers here that you see associated with the cooling only. And if I hit on the winter mode, everything that you see associated with the heating mode. Remember that everything is changing right now. Uh, you see the GPM of the hot water is now 35.4. Now let me switch onto summer mode. The GPM changed to 119.5 GPM for the cooling operation. If I go and click on the overview, basically I demonstrate both modes of operation at the same time. I just clicked on that and as you can see, both modes of operation is showing for the flow during the heating or the flow during the cooling mode. And, and this is very, very good and handy for, for any analysis you might do. So let's, let's get into some other features. If I'm going to create a window here, just left click, keep your left click hand uh, push and then open a window, just release your left click and then you see all of these uh, points are highlighted. Uh, with the green dots here. It means that I have selected the entire system. Now all I need to do just to do a right click on the page here without having the screen buttons go in. You come in here on the connector annotation. If you come to diameter or let's say if I come to velocity, hit on the velocity, all the velocity across my pipes are shown. These are the numbers associated with the velocity. 1.5 for heating, 5.2 for cooling feet per second of the velocity based on what pipe size you're looking in here before you get out of the this uh, default selection as you see all these green um, points we right click again go back to connector annotation now i want to show my pipe diameter just press on pipe diameter and it shows my pipe diameter as you can see this pipe is three inch main distribution pipe is three inch when you get into the fan coil unit, you see that uh, these are uh, 1.25 inch of pipe size for each branches. Basically, if you right click here, and remember you have to have everything selected first. If you come here and you come to connector annotation, you can delete any of these parameters that you have demonstrated, like uh, velocity or uh, anything else by just going to this delete option and select whatever you want to delete. If you don't want to delete or want to add more options, you come out down to other parameters here. For example, if I want to show the head loss, I press on the head loss. Let's see if I have anything showing here. Yeah, this head losses cannot be seen right now. The reason is that we haven't introduced any pipe length. As you can see, the pipe length is zero. So we, we have to basically, as you can see, when I go on to any of the pipe, you have to um, basically uh, add the pipe length so that you can have the head loss calculated. How I do that? When I have it highlighted yellow, I right click, I go to properties view. Because it's uh, everything we have selected, I'm just gonna go to pipe, three inch pipe size, and then go to edit. When I come to next page, I want to. I can see the parameters. What is the velocity parameters? What's the head loss uh, restriction we have defined from before? This is all editable, and you can edit. So on the length, you can add length. For example, if this is a hundred feet pipe, I just can go OK. And as you can see, as soon as I press OK, I can have these numbers for the pressure drop. So you can see 5.2 feet of pressure drop. And as you can see, my pressure drop of pump has increased tremendously to 93.5. So let's see what else we needed to discuss about this. We looked at the flow in each branch. We looked at the pipe sizing and software rationale. We looked at the head loss calculation and how you can add the pipe length. Uh, we looked at the scenario tab at the bottom and we can show how to add or remove multiple parameters and the schematic we did look at that as well how to add flow pipe temperature and etc and how we can remove that so this is great tool i might create more tutorial for this software uh, if you have uh, any specific question please write your question in the comment below if you haven't subscribed for this channel of the world of building design please go ahead and subscribe 
We're going to create a lot of uh, exciting videos in the, in the area of HVAC system design. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.